This is part two of the demonstration of an emergency mesh network. If you've seen part one, we will continue here with this question. What are some of the issues I encountered setting up the Arden emergency network or a mesh network in general? Coming up. I think the goal of Arden is to say that you can get on the Arden network for under $80. And in a best case scenario, this could be true. But in order for you to connect to someone else, there are other issues to be sorted out. The infrastructure isn't true peer-to-peer -peer at the moment. The first big problem is that devices will only connect based on use of the same channel and the same bandwidth setting. Because each router device is different, it means there are islands of unconnected routers that can't find a similar router or similar channel width. This defeats the practicality of this unless there are thousands of each type of channel or bandwidth in your neighborhood. After asking the Arden experts, I was told that the intended solution is for the disparate devices to be hardwired in a network together in some sort of bridging pod and this connection is called a DTD, device to device? Maybe that's what that means. I guess my area must be lacking these DTDs since there isn't one around me and I live in a very dense part of LA. This means that well-funded entities will have to provide these DTD bridge networks of different routers to connect these separate islands. Alternatively, groups of nodes, or node clusters as they call it, can connect their island to the bigger network using a tunnel to the internet. This internet solution though is not the best since in an emergency, the internet will likely be down. Although this could be a partial solution since there's a possibility that only part of the internet is down. The internet is of immense value to connect to distance areas though, like in other states. It may be hit or miss to expect that the Arden network will connect long distance to another state. But I think that in an emergency, the main value will be local. Other modes of communication can be used for long distance aid, such as HF radio. The second big issue is the need for a backbone. It has to be discussed and it has to be planned. Often, you will find that there's no router pointed in your direction. These routers are very directional. The polar map of the RF pattern of a nanostation M5 antenna shows that it really only handles 30 degrees from the front. Some of the other models may do a little bit better at 45 degrees. There may be omnidirectional versions of the nanostation, but I imagine that it would be shorter ranged. This means if you're going to get on the mesh, there has to be a supporting backbone that has a pod of several of these pointed in different directions perhaps on a single tall antenna. That raises the expense and effort. It limits what an individual can do with an $80 device. Third is the range question. In my case, the only main route I can go through is 27 miles away on Mount Wilson. It's on the Mount Wilson Observatory. I can't get a reliable connection to it, so I would need a dish which is even more directional. A dish will reach that 27 miles, not a problem. But the dish is a big expense. I was told that the real life expectation of reasonable distance is 15 miles or so for the standard nanostation. If I add a dish to this, then I can't point to my boat at the same time, which is in a completely different direction from Mount Wilson. So at the very least, to do a semi-connected mesh to the main Arden mesh network, while connecting to my boat, I would need another ubiquity nanostation and preferably with a dish, meaning I have to make one of these DTD nodes. Fourth issue, the use of this mesh is limited only to ham operators and no encryption of any kind is allowed. Even on the ubiquity's Wi-Fi. This is a bit of a hazy area here because there's a little bit of a disconnect between a common product, which is an internet router, and the rules in part 97 related to forwarding of third-party messages. This gets complicated when you think of applications like 
voice over IP, VOIP. I haven't asked the question of the legality of using Arden nodes for non-hams as long as you're in a non-ham frequency. I'll find out later. This kind of mixed mode use would be interesting in an emergency simulation scenario as well as for practical use like VOIP. At the moment, it would only seem like I can only do voice over IP with another ham using the ham frequencies. In a real emergency, there will be exceptions, so we will have to limit this to that use. Unfortunately, it's hard to test for a real world scenario in this way. In summary, this kind of project is a really big advantage to those with a ham license. They are equipped to communicate in an emergency, even to create an internet replacement. Now, this is still a developing project. If you're just a single individual, you may not be able to connect to a mesh. The mesh requires backbones with multiple nodes that can accept connections from all directions and possibly different devices. There needs to be individuals or organizations willing to be part of the backbone infrastructure. And the cost will be much more than $80, possibly 5 to 20 times that. There's also a project called Broadband Hamnet, BBHN, or an old name of HSMM Mesh. This is actually where the Arden Mesh Group started from. Arden focused more on ubiquity routers, which allowed for more longer range applications and use on towers. The original BBHN focused on less expensive TP-Link routers originally, which had shorter range and more limited frequencies. Because BBHN sticks to the 2 GHz frequencies, then there's likely more compatibility in equipment, but at the sacrifice of range. Some areas have more BBHN and some have more Arden. The Dallas area, for example, is heavily built on BBHN. My area in Southern California is more Arden dominated, which may be necessary here because of the larger distances. Here's a map showing the density of Arden around the US. Now, by all means, use BBHN or Arden depending on the density of each in your area. One of my future enhancements to my nodes is to attach it to solar power so they will provide a communication network solely through airwave that operates when the grid is down. And maybe I can develop some other router applications that can enhance its usability, including, as I mentioned, the addition of voice over IP. I hope you enjoy this. If you want to quickly go online on the Arden Mesh with my configuration, you can contact me on how to get a pre-configured Raspberry Pi 3. Now that I have a proof of concept done, maybe I can get many more people to create a huge pod of nodes, especially in the boating community here in Los Angeles. If you like my content, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell.